Climate protesters, yes, they've struck again. This time, interrupting a performance of Romeo and Juliet at London's Sadler's Wells Theatre, demanding an end to the theatre's partnership with Barclays. Oh, yes, the people uh, had no idea what had hit them. It comes as more climate hypocrisy has been on display, courtesy of actress and eco-warrior Emma Thompson, who's been spotted cruising around on a, and just don't spit your coffee out on this, £200 million super yacht in Venice. Yeah, that's right. And that's also actually ironically owned by the uh, billionaire guy who co-founded Fox News as well, which, of course, is not, I would have thought, very eco-lovey, is it, for her? But it's not the first time that she's been caught out being a hypocrite over climate action after racking up thousands of air miles flying from Los Angeles to London to join an Extinction Rebellion demonstrators' march. You could not make this stuff up. I mean, I've also got stories here about Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, Mr. Environment. I mean, I actually like him for his acting work, but he starts banging on about the climate, and then you start having a look at the amount of private jets that he takes or the amount of yachts that he's been on. Prince Harry, of course, once quite famously was reported to have taken a private jet from a polo match. Man of the people. Man of the people. But I am asking, are celebrity climate activists complete and utter total frothing hypocrites. And joining me now is reality star and commentator Narinda Kerr. Narinda, thank you very much for joining me. Do you think that lovely celebs should shut up about the climate? No, I don't. I don't. This faux outrage of this alleged hypocrisy, just because she's gone on this super yacht, which, by the way, just correct me if I'm wrong, is there not sails on this yacht, so it can be powered by wind, which I thought was very eco-friendly. Now, what is Emma meant to do, live in a cave? Just because she does one thing doesn't make her a hypocrite. She's just living her life, but it doesn't change. Just because you think she's a hypocrite, it doesn't change the climate crisis. She's still right about that. But, but is she, though? Because if it was such an emergency, an absolute out-and-out -out emergency, I wouldn't be getting on private jets, I wouldn't be flying anywhere, I wouldn't be going uh, jet-setting around the world, I wouldn't be going on gas-guzzling yachts. If it was such an emergency, it looks to me a bit like she's telling poor little people that their lives need to be impacted on, but her and her multi-million pound mates can just do what they like. No, I don't think it does look like that at all. I think that she's still sending the correct message out. Like I just asked you before, was this not a, a yacht with sails that is powered by wind? And we don't even know if the diesel, if it's bio, biodiesel, so it might be more friendly. I think just because she does one little holiday on some yacht doesn't make her a hypocrite, actually. She's, she's probably doing behind the scenes what she's trying to do. For example, I'm a fan of Euler's. I got rid of my car, so therefore good on me. However, I just came back from Mexico on a flight. Does that make me a massive hypocrite? No, it just means that I am doing my bit. She's doing a bit. It doesn't make her wrong about climate crisis. It doesn't make her a hypocrite. I think she's entitled to spend her money how she wants and still give the message across about climate crisis. But do you, do you not think the message is completely lost if you're looking at the person giving you that message and you think that your carbon footprint will probably be the same as a small country? No, I don't, because actually I think this is one... She's not living on this yacht. She's not living a life on this that's yacht. That's the point. She's, not, she's jetted into she, it. But she's not. Yes, but that's just once. You don't know what she's doing behind the scenes, living a life daily to help with the environment. Well, we've got an she, indication, haven't we? I've, I've got a strong indication about the way that she lives a life behind the scenes because we've also seen her fly in uh, first class to uh, sit on an Extinction Rebellion march. Some of the other people that are uh, on this boat as well, I'm just having a, a little look at now, you know, joining Dame Emma on board uh, the boat, are other American celebrities, you've got your Diane no. Sawyer, Candice Bergen. It, it, it paints a picture picture of somebody who is a high roller living the glitterati lifestyle that, frankly, is doing more to damage the environment than somebody who, who, who just drives into a Eula zone every day. No, I, I disagree, Patrick. I think that people's really? voices like this are needed to, to send that message across. It doesn't make her wrong about climate crisis. Just because she's had one holiday, just because you mentioned these other names, it doesn't make them hypocrites. And also, you seem to be going down this line that, oh, they're these champagne socialists, tell us the little people what to do. She was actually she's picture drinking champagne, which is quite funny, yeah. 
Well, so lots of people can drink champagne. Actually, they could be drinking Prosecco and still be doing what they need to for the environment. I still like to think I'm doing my little bit. It's not Emma Thompson's entire responsibility for climate change. She's one individual. We shouldn't be pitting the entire climate crisis against one individual. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, gen bit. it's a general thing, though, isn't it, as well? You know, you look at Prince Harry and we talk about this carbon offsetting and stuff, and now reports come out to suggest that carbon offsetting is just a complete myth. So this idea that you can get on private Jets. And it's always oh, all right. I've, I've offset it by planting a few trees in the Amazon rainforest. Apparently, it's just complete tosh, basically. So there's no real point doing any of that. Leonardo DiCaprio, this is just a few weeks ago. You know, I'm looking at it here. He's a noted climate activist, boarded a plane at a private airport. It's got its own private jet terminal for wealthy travellers. It comes as he travelled between US and cities such as London, Milan, and Paris over recent months, accumulating 12,000 air miles. Worth of travel, but you know. But tell but me more. Anything. Tell me more, Leo, about the end of the world. You know. But 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 he's still using his voice for the right message. What's he supposed to do? Oh. Live in a cave and not travel? He, not like he that. can't do everything, Patrick. He can't do everything. He's doing what he, he can. Do more. Well, he's not. But, no, no, he's obviously not doing what he can, is he? If he's getting on private jet. Of course, he's he's doing. He's a superstar. He can't just get an on economy flight. He's oh, still God, using come his on. voice. <laughs> come using on, voice. you don't you believe say, this stuff you're saying. I, I, Patrick, I do because I got on a flight. I got rid of my car, and I'm a U.S. supporter. What I'm saying is, you can't. It is not Leonardo DiCaprio's responsibility for the entire climate crisis, and you can't say that they're being hypocrites or oh, they're champagne socialists. I don't buy that argument, Patrick, and I don't think you do either. I think you know they're lending their voice to the right causes. It doesn't mean they've got it for their own the image. Game. For their it's own their image. Money. They're doing it for their no, own image. They'll have PR people behind the scenes saying, you know what you should do is you should you should really get on board with the climate lobby because everyone will think you're a really nice guy. Everyone will think you're a really great, you're a great woman for doing that. But, you know, just get on that private jet and your hypocrisy will be there for, for all to see. That's the way I look at it, Narinda. I stop that's, listening that's to these people. I stop listening advice. to these people when I see the way that they live their lives. You know, I, honestly, I, I, I really do. But look, Narinda, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on and fighting the good fight. And, you know, well done for doing your bit in relation to the, uh, the ULAS disaster. Narinda Kerr there, reality TV star, commentator, friend of the channel.